In today's easy DIY table runner tutorial, I'm going to share with you how I created this extra long table runner for my extended 12-seater Scandi style dining table using a handful of supplies and just four short stitch lines. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to Uni Crafts. If this is your first time here, this is a crafts and home improvement channel committed to donating a percentage of all ad revenue to charities of your choice. You can find out more in the about section of Uni Crafts. Let's go ahead. Many moons ago on an eBay auction, I had won a roll of heavy upholstery fabric. This is really thick heavy duty cotton fabric. It feels almost like denim. In fact, the color was also quite like blue denim or blue jeans as well. And I had used this many years ago to reupholster a set of dining chairs. I used to have a pre-loved dining set and the chairs were looking really ratty. So I had upholstered those chairs and this is a leftover fabric. Now the runner I want to make is quite long. So instead of cutting one long length of this fabric, I decided to cut a relatively shorter length of this fabric. And then I will be cutting it into two pieces and sewing them together to create one long runner. So here I am, I'm cutting away around one and a half meters of this fabric from the roll. After cutting it, I put the fabric piece into my washing machine and gave it a quick cold wash just to make sure that it shrinks as much as it should. Next, I line dried the fabric indoors. Once it was good and dry, which took about a day, this is what the piece looked like. And surprise of all surprises, when I measured it, it had shrunk by a massive 20 centimeters. So the fabric, instead of now being 150 centimeters long, it was actually just 130 centimeters long. Now I've got quite a wide, a very generous sized Scandi style dining table and I wanted a generous 14 inch wide table runner for that. So now what I did is I took my measuring tape and I measured in 14 inches from one straight edge off this piece of fabric and I marked out 14 inch marks all the way down the length of the fabric using a chalk pen. Now I took my fabric scissors and I cut along that 14 inch marks line. I noticed that there was a line of stitches running all the way down the length of either side of the fabric. This is to keep the fabric from unraveling. So I took my fabric scissors and I also cut away this line of stitches because I intend to unravel the fabric on either edge. Once I had trimmed away the stitch line, this is what the fabric looks like. It's essentially just a really long, perfectly rectangular strip of fabric, which is now ready to be processed further. Now what you will notice is that because this is such a thick woven pure cotton, it's got really thick uh, fibers or threads running in crisscross directions. And it's actually really easy to start unraveling these threads or these strands of cotton fabric uh, from the edge of the fabric. The trick to unraveling it properly is to start with just one strand and work that strand all the way down the length of the fabric and then move on to the next strand rather than doing several at a time. So here I am, I'm pulling away one strand of fabric at a time and once I find a break where it just comes away from the fabric, I move on to the next. In this way, I worked through a bunch of different strands until I had unraveled around one and a half to two centimeters of fabric. And then I kept on working all these strands all the way down to the opposite edge of the fabric.
that's the last of the fabric strands and now you can see all this bunch of threads has been unraveled from the length of this rectangular piece of fabric and if I show you the edge now you can see that it's got this lovely white fringe running down the length of it it's about one and a half to two centimeters deep and now all I have to do is repeat this on the other edge of this fabric as well and I also cut out another length of fabric and repeated the same with that as well. So now I have got two identical pieces of fabric with these white fringes running on both the long sides. Now these two lengths of fabric need to be connected together to make one long length of fabric runner. So here I am, I'm checking what's the right side and what's the wrong side of this fabric. And then I layered the fabrics one on top of the other with the right sides facing each other. And I took my time to match up the edges perfectly or as best as I could, making sure all the edges are matching up to each other so that the runner when it's finally stitched down, sits perfectly straight uh, down the length of my table. So I matched up not just the short edges, but also the long edges, making sure that everything is sitting perfectly aligned with each other. Before we move on to the next section, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for watching the videos here. You must have seen a bar flashing at the bottom of this video. This is the amount of money that you have helped raise for charity through Unicrafts and all of these charities are listed in the about section of the channel so please do go check that out. If you want to help the cause absolutely free of cost you can take the one view wonder challenge all you have to do is watch one more video here without skipping any ads. For further details please do read the about section of Unicrafts and now let's move on. Now I was feeling lazy and my sewing clips were all the way at the top of the house in my sewing room so I just had these bulldog clips lying around downstairs. I simply used these to clip one short edge of the two fabric pieces together. Now to make sure that my seam is perfectly straight I simply used a short length of painter's tape or decorator's tape. It's a really cheap paper tape. I taped it down just past those bulldog clips. Um, and I'm going to sew a, a length of stitches down one edge of this tape to give me perfectly straight stitches. So here it is, my mini sewing machine is all set up. This is a familiar sight for you guys, I'm sure. And I simply used the reverse kangaroo hop method to lock my threads in. And then I proceeded to sew a straight stitch down the length of one edge of this painter's tape edge. I carefully removed the painter's tape making sure that I'm not fraying the edges of the fabric unnecessarily and after I open up the fabric you can see that it created this lovely very simple straight stitch between these two fabric pieces and now it's time to open up the seam ends and press them down and after pressing them down in order to lay these seams flat I sewed a straight stitch on either side of this central seam. So here I am aligning the right edge of my presser foot with the central seam and sewing a straight stitch down there to make sure that the seam sits flat. And then I'm going to repeat this on the opposite side as well. Once this is done, you can see that my seams are sitting beautifully flat because I've stitched them down on either side of that central seam. However, you will realize that these two heavy pieces of fabric are joined together by just one row of stitches. In order to reinforce that joint, I'm going to do a stitch in the ditch, which is just another row of stitches running straight down that central seam. And that's an old quilting trick which reinforces your stitches. So using my sewing machine, I simply just followed that central seam line and I sewed a row of stitches down that central seam line just straight within that seam. It's called stitch in the ditch and it reinforces your stitches ever so much and it just made the whole runner so much more stronger. Now here's my extended dining table and that's a central line. I'm going to align the central seam of my table runner with that central line on my dining table where I have extended it. Um, and once I lay out the entire length of my table runner 
from one edge to the other, you can see that quite a lot of fabric dangles down the edge of the table. And this is exactly what we want right now. Now I want the opaque end of my table runner to dangle at the 10 inch mark here, as you can see. But in order to do that, I need to cut the fabric at the 8 inch mark so I can create 2 inch long fringes. So here I am, I'm marking um, with a chalk pen along the 8 inch mark uh, line away from the edge so I can cut across this line. And I use that excess piece of fabric that I just cut away as a guide to cut away an equal length of fabric from the opposite end of the runner as well so that both the sides are balanced from the central line of the runner. It's time to start fraying the shorter edge of the runner now. And for some reason, the strands on this edge, the shorter edge, were a lot harder to pull away compared to the longer lengths of strands. So here I am, I'm trying to pull away the first strand from the edge and instead of it simply coming away from the fabric i actually had to scrunch up the fabric to kind of pull it out all the way down the length of that weave and after doing a handful of strands just like that i realized that my fingers are actually getting sore because this was incredibly thick cotton um, fabric and the strands are quite thick as well so to help me with this i started using my needle nose pliers and this made the job so much more easier. It was a lot more precise. I could pull out the exact strand that I needed. And there was no pressure, no tension on my fingers. Um, and it just made the process a lot more faster as well. So if you are also trying to create something like this where you want to unravel some fabric and if you think the strands are quite stubborn, try using some needle nose pliers small pliers which can grab on to the end of the fibers and it just became so much faster and before long i was done with both the edges and here you can see the beautiful two inch long fringes on either end of my beautiful table runner And here, as you can see, is the finished table runner after I gave it a good press. It just turned out perfectly exactly how I had imagined it to be. As you guys know from my last video uh, where we did the IKEA bench makeover, um, my new color scheme in my new home is blue and green. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. I don't like stuff which is too blingy. So this was quite subtle. And the best thing is it was very cost effective for me because I had a piece of fabric lying around that I used. Um, if I were to go out and buy this length of runner for a 12 seater dining table online, it was costing me well over 45 pounds, which I just felt was ridiculous. So I'm so glad I was able to use up stuff which was already at home and create something that I really truly love. I love the texture, I love the way it feels and once I had dressed up my table for some guests who are visiting you will see that it actually looked very very beautiful. Right now I only have 10 chairs at my dining table. I have yet to buy two more chairs. I'll be buying two blue chairs probably next but here as you can see during the party um, it just looked lovely. It's exactly how I imagined it to be. I hope you found today's tutorial helpful and that it inspired you to create something on the cheap at home to dress your tables at home. Thank you so much for watching. Please do check out the about section of Uni Crafts to find out more about what we are doing behind the scenes to raise money for charities that you love. Thank you so much for watching and being here with me today. If you found this video helpful, please do consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Thank you and I shall see you next week. Bye!